Hey, I'm Dublin from Team CLG, and this is my law class basic champ guide to Callista. As with all ADs, the runes don't really change. You're going to be running attack speed quints, AD reds, armor yellows, and either flatter scaling MR blues, depending on whether or not their bottom lane has any magic damage. Callista also uses pretty standard AD masteries. You're going to be running uh, spell weaving and blade weaving because she is a caster. She does a lot of casting between her autos. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Uh, Three points devastating strikes and no points warlord. Callista's skill order uh, can vary based on the game, but generally you want to be maxing E and starting off the game with E. Uh, nowadays, bottom lanes can start either Gromp or Double Golems, and Ren is incredibly powerful for killing these neutrals really fast and then going to lane. Q is also just really unreliable to land at level 1, but if you can hit it, it's actually really strong. So just depending on where your support is and where the enemy bottom lane is positioned, you can either go Q or E level 1, but try to lean towards maxing E because the rend damage goes up and the cooldown goes down. So Callista can be built in so many different ways. Uh, the primary one I would say for solo Q is Bork into Ghost Blade. Just like Twitch, uh, she's super strong with these two items. It gives her two actives, gives her incredible mobility. And not only that, but the armor pen synergizes really well with both her rend and her Q. So I'd actually re recommend maxing Q if you're going to go Bork into Ghost Blade. And just try this build out because it seems really, really strong. The other build you can go is the standard IE into Shiv into Bloodthirster or Last Whisper build. Uh, this is something that you want to do when you really need to carry and you're going for that late game because honestly, Kalista's biggest spikes come from her mid game power and IE into Shiv doesn't really augment that very well. But it is something that's very strong once you get to three, four, five items. So if you're going for the late game, then go IE Shiv into Last Whisper. Callista's solo queue power is actually very weak. Uh, one of the reasons why is she's incredibly easy to gank. You'd think that with her infinite escape ability, she would be able to dodge ganks really well. It's actually not very good early game because you don't have very much attack speed. And so your only escape is actually just this very kind of slow wind up into a pretty mediocre jump away. She's really easy to gank. And for that reason, she's not good in solo queue because she also has a hard time snowballing lane and she requires a lot of synergy with her support. If your support is not on the same page as you, you essentially don't have an ultimate. So in solo queue, I would rate her probably like a 2 or 3 out of 10, honestly, on the lines of Twitch because she's really easy to gank, she's not easy to get kills with, and she's definitely not easy to work with your team with if they don't know exactly what you're thinking. Kalista's laning can be either really good or really, really bad, depending on how good you are at dodging skill shots. So she's actually really difficult to hit skill shots on, obviously, because her passive gives her a dash on every auto. But at the same time, if your support isn't with you on every trade, she's generally going to lose because she doesn't have a reliable nuke. While Lucian and Quirky have those nukes that, okay, they just hit the button, it does a million damage, Kalista's Q is super hard to hit because it can just kind of sit behind the creeps. And Rend requires you to land three to four autos to get a positive trade, or even an even trade in a lot of situations. So I would say in lane, just try your best to farm up. Uh, once you get those one or two items, you can actually outtrade almost every AD. And the most important thing is make sure you don't uh, get pushed in. Kalista is really, really bad at lasting on her tower, primarily because you can't use your Q without messing up other CS. So pushing in is definitely ideal. And once you hit level three or four and get W, you can kind of use your ghosts to patrol the river to make sure you don't get ganked from behind. Uh, once you push them in, it's much easier to land your Q and to get good rend harass. Callista does the best in lane with a defensive support, you know, like Soraka, like Janna, like Nami. You're looking for these things in solo queue, but if you have a duo partner outside of lane and actually pretty much past level three to four when she's kind of weak, she does the best with playmaking supports such as Thresh and all the melee supports. So that is Alistair, Leona, Braum, uh, every support with a hard CC. Even Thresh does really well because you can throw them in, they get knocked up, they get chain CC'd forever. You know, just imagine throwing a Thresh in, they get knocked up, they get hooked, they get boxed, they get played. They can't even move for like four to five seconds. But in lane, these champions don't have great synergy with her because she's already inherently weak. Melee supports don't provide a lot of lane pressure for her, but if you can make it out of lane with a melee support, it's definitely ideal. Calista's team fighting is really tricky. The only time you can actually really get popped is at the very beginning. Uh, her dash is in very long range, like Corky Valkyrie or Lucian E. It's pretty weak, so if you get CC'd, 
then they get on top of you, it's actually kind of hard to get them off of you. It's more her passive is used to dance around the fight and make sure she doesn't get hit by skill shots. So don't go in right away. Let your support kind of be that bait. Let him go in, then pull him back with your ulti and let him kind of knock the person up right in front of you so you can dance around the team fight around the outer edges. Um, once you kind of start attacking and getting in the groove of things, it's really hard for someone to run away from you or get on top of you because you have so much mobility. So make sure you don't die at the very beginning and then you'll just start doling out a million damage because as soon as you start autoing, your ran damage keeps going up and up and up and someone's probably going to die. My second tip is to think of her ulti as a sort of friendly Zed ult. Uh, as you can probably tell, most Zeds use their ulti to negate a lot of damage. It makes them invulnerable for a short period of time, just like your ulti does for your support. So it might take a little bit of communication. You might have to say in chat, like, oh, you can overextend, you can go out and bait CC, because if the enemy team uses a big ability, uh, some CC on your support, you can just pull them out and you know it'll fizzle out or you know even if they're already stunned or damaged you can pull them back in and then just shoot them back out um her ulti is so good at, at baiting and overextended support or allowing your support to play more aggro than they normally could so just kind of abuse the fact that your ulti makes your support essentially invulnerable and then will knock somebody up right in front of you for you to start doing damage that's it for this guy i hope it helped if you have any questions tweet me at clg double